Kia ora koto. Today we're responding to the AM show interview, or should I say ambush, where to my complete surprise they brought out Tim Mackle, the CEO from lobby group Dairy NZ, to have the final say on the segment that they told us was going to be an interview with me about milked. Published later on News Hub, they called it a head to head between myself and Tim. The image shows a picture of myself next to him, implying some sort of debate between us. The interview was also introed by one of the show's hosts as a debate. In reality, I wasn't given a chance to talk or respond to Tim at all. In fact, I wasn't even informed that Tim would be interviewed after me. I sat on their couch as halfway through, the show's host cuts me off to bring him in on screen. This was clearly a stitch up. The producer of the AM show has apologized this morning for not telling me Tim would be coming on after me. Nice gesture, but we'd prefer the AM show to invite us back for a proper debate. But let's put that aside for now and get into the interview, including comments from the host and Tim Mackle. The host, Melissa, gets straight into it by asking me what I would like to have done about the dairy industry. So they completely skipped a discussion about what the issues of the dairy industry actually are. She follows up by saying, There are a number all. of... of quite shocking claims but but throughout the whole interview she failed to give a single fact from the documentary every single claim made in the film is backed up by our facts page on the milked website by framing them as shocking claims the host is sowing seeds of doubt without actually refuting anything said in the film a cheap shot which disrespects the many experts interviewed in the film Melissa then says, emissions from milk production in NZ are 40% lower than the global average. We have no idea where Melissa got this stat from. At the time of making the film, Dairy NZ's website said that NZ Dairy was 64% more emissions efficient than the global average. Now, this statistic is removed from the main pages of their website. The claim that NZ Dairy is the most emissions efficient in the world was initially made by research funded by, you guessed it, Dairy NZ. The study has been called out for using different methodology to calculate our emissions from other countries. If they had used the default calculation method from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, these figures would be 58% higher than what was originally reported. That's a massive difference and means our emissions aren't the lowest and are in fact in the middle of countries and are not exceptional at all. The industry funds research, plays games with their numbers and creates misinformation. For example, there are two reports that we cite in Milked showing Fonterra's emissions are nearly double what the industry is reporting. Unfortunately, as proven by Melissa, the media simply repeat industry misinformation, taking little notice of any independent research that contradicts their claims. Running with the claim, Melissa says, People are drinking milk, and isn't it better to produce it in a country that does look at sustainable practices and innovation? As revealed in the film, the sustainable practices and innovation is mostly greenwashing and silver bullets that have failed to bring any meaningful outcome. Melissa implies that the global demand for dairy is a natural phenomenon. Failing to recognize the global dairy industry worth over 827 billion USD spends a massive chunk of its profits on advertising and creating that demand. Just recently, the UN released a report detailing how the $55 billion baby formula industry uses pervasive, misleading, and aggressive marketing strategies to influence parents' infant feeding decisions. The report found that the sector used exploitative practices that compromise child nutrition and violate international commitments. The majority of New Zealand's milk is exported as milk powder, which ends up in products like baby formula. So the industry literally creates demand for milk from the day we're born. If we want to reduce dairy consumption, all we have to do is stop manipulating people into buying it. And as I said in the interview, this demand is soon going to be met by precision fermentation, especially when it comes to milk powder. So what are we doing to prepare our farmers for this disruption? Now let's get to Tim's arguments which look like they were carefully prepared prior to the interview. I'm willing to bet that unlike me, Tim had a heads up about my involvement in this debate. Firstly, Tim says our dairy industry is anything but industrial, saying that most farms are family owned. Family owned is a marketing term used to distract from their industrial nature. Walmart is family owned. Does that mean they're not industrial? 
Industrial farming means large-scale, intensive production of animals. Fonterra is our largest company. New Zealand is the largest exporter of dairy in the world. We have more dairy cows than we do human beings. The global average dairy herd size is three cows, ours is 400. In fact, only 0.3% of all dairy farms in the world have more than 100 cows, putting us at the very top of intensive dairying. This industry relies on migrant workers and uses record amounts of unsustainable inputs like synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, palm kernel expeller, blood phosphate from Western Sahara, and the industry is our country's second largest user of coal. That's about as industrial as it gets. It's also sinister to use families as a media shield, while the industry disregards the increased cancer risk brought to these families by their own nitrate fertilizers. The nitrates contaminate our drinking water, which could be affecting up to 800,000 people here in Aotearoa, with dairy farming families who live on their farms at the center of contamination sites. Tim says, yes, I work for the dairy sector, but I can tell you hand on heart, milk is a wholesome food. Here we have Tim using the classic fallacy, appeal to authority. He doesn't address any of the facts stated in the film, simply saying he has a PhD and that milk is wholesome. I'm sorry, but putting your hand on your heart doesn't amount to a scientific reference. Milked, on the other hand, had nutrition experts providing us with facts that are backed up by science and referenced on our website. They also don't get paid millions by any big industry. The majority of people around the world are lactose intolerant, including... 64% of Māori. For many people, dairy creates increased mucus production, asthma, allergies, and bloating. Even worse, dairy is linked with some of the world's biggest killers, such as heart disease, hormonal cancers, and diabetes. Next, Tim says, almost half of the calcium consumed globally comes from dairy, 12% of protein, and almost 20% of vitamins and minerals. We've already addressed how the dairy industry manufactures this demand. Just because we consume lots of it doesn't mean it's good for us. The myth that calcium from dairy is good for bone health is covered in the film. Countries with the highest dairy consumption also have the highest rates of fractures. Outdated science has led many countries, like New Zealand, to advocate for calcium intakes double what is recommended by the World Health Organization, highlighting the need to reassess just how important massive amounts of calcium and dairy products are for human health. And animal agriculture is undeniably the least efficient way to produce food. Although 83% of the world's agricultural land is used for farmed animals, only 18% of global calories come from that land use, showing us that we could easily meet the nutrition needs of the world without destroying our environment and exploiting animals. And of course, we don't need to consume dairy and meat to get protein. All plants contain all essential amino acids in varying amounts, which naturally encourages us to consume a varied diet. Dairy being consumed in such high amounts is coming at the expense of other, healthier sources of nutrition. Next, Tim says, The progress we've made is phenomenal. What progress has been made? We reached peak cow years ago. Our dairy emissions can't get any higher, and water contamination is increasing. Where's the progress? Next, Tim says, it's not a documentary, it's a movie. It's so one-sided. Melissa let that one slide, even though Tim wasn't able to discredit anything from our documentary. We interviewed multiple dairy farmers. Plus, the whole film is basically about me trying to get an interview with the industry. <sighs> the industry has a huge marketing budget to present themselves being sustainable and ethical, which it does relentlessly and, of course, without reflecting the truth. So the public are inundated with one side, that is, the side of the industry. We tried to bring some balance to the discussion through an independently funded documentary which had input from experts across various fields. We addressed industry talking points in the film and explained why there were issues with them. The segment predictably ended with one of the hosts talking about his milk and his coffee, showing a clear bias to what is presented as a balanced current affairs show. It's sad to see the AM show playing games with us on such a serious topic, especially when, on that same day, a previous segment from the AM show was talking about the alarming rate of sea level rise. The issues of the dairy industry are no joke. These issues risk our very existence. If you haven't seen the film already, you can watch it on Waterbeer, YouTube, or visit our website, milked.film. Noho mate.